I'm so glad you guys could join us. This is an opportunity to thank friends, family, investors, sponsors, an opportunity to uh, film this because there'll be some interesting things coming on here about the Jamestown Tarps Cups. Brief, brief history lesson, Jamestown Community Baseball came as a result of a, an arrangement held between myself, the mayor, and Mike Zimmerman, wherein, for reasons not quite clear, he gave us the franchise. And we got the franchise if, if we created a community baseball team. And what we did, we went out and several of you folks were willing to take my calls, probably wished you had not, but you did. And the next thing you know, you contributed, the next thing you know, you contributed your time, monies, talents, you know, everybody here has done all that stuff. And we've got a significant number of folks who are part of it, like the Green Bay Packers, that own this team. We subsequently got a name, the Tarp Skunks. Rather than repeat how that happened, you can look on the sign uh, in, at the, in the ballpark there, but nevertheless, Tarp Skunks. And I'm sure one of the things that Jacob will be talking about when he gets back here will be the successes of this crazy thing, the Jamestown Tarp Skunks. This is our first year here in the league because of uh, COVID, and so far, so good. We are first place in the Western Division, I believe, as of now, six games, with eight games, I believe, left to play. So that's a good thing. And Jacob will explain actually how the playoffs work, because I don't have a clue. But my goal was simply to have us have a burger and a dog, and to thank everybody who's been part of this, and our chairman of the board, most importantly, Russ Dietrich, because without Russ, first of all, there would be no baseball, and without Russ, there'd be no Jamestown Community Baseball, so to Russ Dietrich, we again tip our hat. Without Russ Hitchcock, there wouldn't have been a June Dietrich, and you'd have really been. God, <laughs> <laughs> is he playing it? He's he playing it. Wow. Amen. Without any further ado, our general manager, Jacob Kinberg. All right. Here you go. Yeah. Appreciate you being here. Um, quickly, I'll go over the playoff format, and then I'll get into kind of what I was going to uh, talk about. But. So playoff format, yes, we are first in the division. Right now we are second overall in the league. Um, why that's important, the top two finishers in each division make the playoffs. Of those, and we have three divisions, East, Central, West. Of those six teams, um, the top two get a first round bye in the playoffs. Um, and that's especially important because the first two rounds of the playoffs are single elimination games. So just because you're the better team, and we probably will be in that game, you know, it, man, it, it just takes one game, as we all know, you know, anything can happen in one game. So getting that, that first round bye is going to be huge. Um, hopefully we can get it. If not, you know, Jordan's got a great team. Um, so we, we feel pretty good about our chances. Uh, another important thing is home teams host the playoff, or excuse me, the higher seed is the home team in the playoffs, and that's, that's true throughout the whole tournament. So, a good chance that uh, we'll be a high seed and we'll be having at least one, if not more, home playoff games, which is exciting. And that'll be the first week of August. Um, well, the last two days of July into the first week of August for the playoffs. Uh, but yeah, so as Greg mentioned, we have a great season. We're 23, now 24 and 11. Um, maybe even better have we not had this the rain that we've had the last few weeks. I know everybody's probably <coughs> affected by it, but we are especially. We've had you know, now five rainouts here in the last two and a half weeks, so that's been rough. Had we not had those, we would have had even even more wins. I'm, I'm quite sure of it. So uh, things have been going well on on the on the field, and certainly off the field on, on the business side, have been going well as well. Um, we're up over 80 percent in attendance, is where they were in previous seasons. Up to 737 was our last count of um, average attendance, which we're very happy about. We think we can. Get, Continue to grow that, um, but overall, I think we've been happy. Been happy with Robert. I think Robert's been happy with us at Three C's. Uh, it's been yeah, a good part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've uh, got. Yes. Yeah, Plus, she's got a liquor license. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. We were fortunate enough to have a lot of these picnics. Uh, would have had even more without the rain, but we're getting a lot of them rescheduled. So that's good. We love filling up this tent in the surrounding area for picnics. 
Uh, we're getting out to the community as, as much as we can. Uh, for those of you that heard me speak in, I believe it was October, November, Greg, when we had that event at the Jackson Center, um, we, we really wanted to position ourselves as a community asset. I think we're well on the way to doing that. Um, continuing to get out in the community, whether it's with the players. Uh, we were at the institution last night uh, for a little celebrity softball game with some of their softball players. Uh, we love doing events like that. We hit local ones as well. We've been to schools um, in, in this this off season, bring the mascot to schools as much as we had to stay outside of the schools because of COVID. But we're getting out as, as much as we can. Uh, I'm always looking for opportunities to do more of that. If anyone's involved in with a group or an organization that could take advantage of that, we would we would love to do so. Um, Jacob, talk things. about the merchandise. Yeah. Oh man, I'll yeah. tell you. My biggest problem since being on the job here has been keeping our merchandise store stocked. And that's certainly no criticism to Jock Shop, which has been doing a fantastic job keeping us stocked with merchandise, but it is flying off the shelves. Uh, we're just seeing record numbers of merchandise sales, and I, the credit goes to the, to the name and the logo, of course, which has turned out to be a, a huge success. And I, I, at least in my experience, at least the last few years, I, I haven't seen as much jammer stuff as we now see Tarps Kunk stuff at the ballpark. Everyone has a shirt on. Everybody's wearing a, a hat. We've done a few blackout and blue out nights, uh, which have been very successful getting people out with uh, wearing their gear. So that's been very exciting. Uh, a lot of a lot of good things. Um, quickly. We got new picnic tables, uh, courtesy of the community, a grant through the Community Foundation. Um, they look good, they came out real nice, they're a lot better than the splintered ones that we had in the past, but they were a heck of a lot of work to put together. I spent a lot of hours on these. Bought them from a local company. Got them from Jamestown Advanced Products. They did a nice job, nice quality tables. A lot of work went into them on, on everyone's end, so I'm glad that we're able to utilize them. Uh, any, I'd, I'd love to answer a few questions quickly if I could, if, if anybody had anything. If not, I know Jordan's going to speak to you guys a little bit more on the team side. Yeah. Are you going to call up Austin Meadows for the playoffs? <laughs> oh, man, I would love that. I would love that. We've we got a pretty good team without him, though, so if he's not able to make it, I still feel good. Yeah. So, yes, any other questions or... Seems like we're all set. Well, I guess we'll just turn it over to Jordan. Uh, Jordan's been doing, as we mentioned, a terrific job on the field with recruiting and then their performance this year. So our head coach, Jordan Bazil. Yeah. Thanks for coming out. Um, hopefully you guys have been enjoying the uh, the season so far. Um, this has got a great group of guys, as you can see. They've been working their butts off. These guys are all in. And I'll tell you one thing. Uh, very appreciative of what everybody here has done. Um, we kind of knew going into this year, we weren't sure what this year was going to bring us. Um, and the fact that, you know, everything has come together like this and the comments that these guys have made throughout the year, this is the best time playing baseball that I've ever had in my life in Jamestown. And that that's all honesty. Um, you hear them make comments, this is the summer of 2021, the summer of 2021, and it's... Uh, Obviously, number one, thank you all you guys for making this happen. And uh, number two, just everything that we have here from the dorms, the, the grounds crew, the people, um, you know, the fans that have been here in attendance. It's been crazy down there. Um, sometimes I have to hold my laugh, listen to some of these fans back here. <laughs> it's, been, uh, it's been absolutely awesome. So uh, glad everybody could make it today. Um, I guess you guys have any any questions for me on anything? Hi, I got one. Yeah. Jordan, for the fan in the stand, they're watching something called small ball like we've never yeah. watched before. Oh, yeah. Is that a philosophy of yours, or is this just more? Yeah, it, it's, you know, it kind of always, it, it depends on what kind of team you have. And with these guys, you know, we're not we're not a type of team that hits the ball out of the park. You know, we, we probably have five, six home runs on the year. But we know if we can get on base, we get a bunt down, we can steal base, things are going to happen. Uh, seven out of nine guys in our lineup, as soon as they get on, if a single becomes a double half the time, they're ready to run. So uh, if, if other teams aren't doing a good job holding runners, we can uh, we make things happen, whether it's stealing or where we lay down a punt and get something down on the ground. And, and it's amazing to see how many teams aren't prepared to field a bunt, you know, and how, how teams don't practice that. 
And uh, you know, at, at the beginning of the year, you're watching some of these teams, and they're going, they're going. What do you? These guys bond. They can't hit. They can't do that. And I think we slowly they're noticing. Uh, well, we actually play the game the right way, and uh, we come here every day and we grind, and uh, we find we find ways to win. And, and guess what's happening? You see teams throughout the league starting to lay down butts on us too. Yeah. <laughs> Solid tonight. So, you can play all you want, but that's what you're gonna get. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, one, <clears throat> kind of playoff time. Are we in jeopardy uh, to lose any players going back to college? Um, we're not in jeopardy of losing any guys. We are going to be losing one player here in the next couple of days. It was a plan. It was a planned thing from the beginning of uh, of the year. It was a uh, his grandfather's retirement. Grandfather's retirement vacation and a uh, big family guy. And there's nothing really you can say to that, but. With this group of guys, you lose one, it's next guy up, and uh, they're not going to miss a beat. So we're not uh, we're not too worried about it. And, and uh, these guys are here till the end, and it, that's great. Because you don't always see that in summer ball. These teams start to pack up early, and these guys want to be here. Um, there hasn't been anything out of their mouths other than playoffs and winning this thing and, and, and winning a championship. And they know if they leave early, these, these type of crowd that they're going to get outcasted too. They know better. <laughs> they're not picking anything up. They'll be heckled to death. <laughs> Um, but no, we're we're in good shape and right on right on pace to uh, hopefully hopefully do the thing. <laughs> Jordan, now that you've played around the league many times, what have you? What's your sense of the league itself that we play in? It, it's great. I mean, just and truthfully, I didn't know exactly what to expect. I knew what I wanted as far as a team goes, but what to expect from other teams. And people are coming to these games. Fans are coming to these games. I think you guys can all attest. It's good baseball. Make plays, uh, you know. Guys play hard. Good pitching, you know. And it's uh, all around, top to bottom. It's a great league. And mind you, we've only seen five of the teams in our division. Um, but you look at some of these other divisions, and, and uh, same same way. So, Jordan. Yep. I don't know if you talked about this. I'm late coming in, but can you tell us if you haven't already something about the history of the perfect league? how that got started and how long it's been around. So, Perfect Game League, exactly yeah. the amount of years. You guys might know better than I do the amount of years that it's been around. Um, is, it, is that on there too? Um, but but really, it's it's it, it's sponsored obviously by Perfect Game. It's it's for these guys to come here, develop, and, and uh, you know you when you create a league too, you you gotta have the talent to come to the league. And it, it's made its reputation throughout the years, and that's, I mean, that's been visible. But the exact amount of time, I don't know off the top of my head. been around for a while. Yeah, but it, it's been around, and, and uh, it's a known league. I mean, we're, we're easily one of the top ten leagues in the country, if not top five in the country. Jordan? Yes. How heavily are you scouted by professional scouts? How heavily are we? Um, it, this year, it's it's been hit or miss. If, if you got a guy, they're going to show up, you know. Um, now that there's 20 rounds, it, things are changing a little bit. They're, the analytics tell you sometimes you got to go watch these guys in the south before you take a guy up north. Mind you, we have a lot of southern kids. Um, but guys will show up. If you got guys, they'll be there. And, and you know, we, I don't know if you guys saw, but out of this league over the last two or three years, um, just, just this year there was 20 guys that were drafted, maybe 21, somewhere right in there. Uh, that played in the perfect game league in that guy. So, um, and, and honestly, I think a couple of those guys from that Jamestown 2018 team, you might see their name go next year as well. So, and then hopefully a few of these guys coming in the next couple of years too. So, cool. Jordan, I know you got a game, so we're gonna let you run. Uh, I'm good for it if you want. Couple, I'm gonna okay. try to get Vince here. Okay. No disrespect. No, no, no. You're, you're good. <laughs> I saw, no, 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 no. Jordan, one last. Um, how many of these players will you uh, keep for next year and then out here and fill in the gaps? So I asked, I asked myself that question. And a lot of times throughout the guys' college careers, they like to change it up and go see somewhere. But there's been some communication. Our, our trainer kind of mentioned something. They're like, heck, if I can come back to Jamestown, I'm coming back next year. So I think we're going to see a good amount of them. We haven't had that conversation yet. That'll start as soon as they get back to school. But truthfully, any of these guys that were on, on this team's roster are going to be welcomed with open arms because uh, I, what they're doing is something pretty special. Giving you the hook. Thanks, George. Kick me out of here. <laughs>
This is Mike Bellani, by the way, General Manager Extraordinaire of the Buffalo Bisons. When you think of 1988 Buffalo Bisons, it's Mike Bellani. When you think of the, the Blue Jays just recently playing like with uh, fans for the very first time, it's Mike Bellani. The ultimate book on the history of baseball, it's Mike Bellani, our general manager of the Jamestown Jammers way back when, Mike Bellani. So he's put out this book. Give us a few minutes and then you got a present. Why don't you give it to Vince too? If you're done. Uh, well, thank you very much, June and Russ. It's a pleasure to be here with you and the Tale the Dungeon. It's uh, great to be back here. I was just, you know, thinking on the ride down how many years ago it was when we first, uh, you know, moved the team. Um, here to Jamestown and just some uh, great memories and I think what the GM previous and the manager uh, the, talked about of you know the community getting around this team I think is so important and um, the quality of play here because Niagara Falls is also in this league and I've seen some of their games and um, these kids are really playing for the love of the game which is really what the game's all about and this book was started back when um, I began with uh, the Riches at uh, War Memorial Stadium in 83. 85 was the 100th season of uh, Buffalo baseball. And uh, Joe Overfield, our historian, literally hand wrote the first 100 years. And then three years ago, uh, um, his son called me and we collaborated on this. And, um, this is really the uh, the history of Buffalo baseball, although what's happening in Buffalo and baseball in 2021 sort of outdates this, and there's now an interesting chapter there with Major League Baseball being played in front of fans for the first time in 105 seasons. So it's been a very interesting uh, um, run with baseball there, but I think what's happening you know, throughout the area, and I think COVID and keeping people away has brought people back and I'm so happy to hear that the attendance is uh, rising here but more importantly I'm here happy to hear the players are enjoying uh, being here and you know you don't hear that a lot especially in all the years of uh, you know pro ball you know they're always looking to go up so to hear that kind of uh, commentary just speaks highly about the community here so Greg I'd love to have Mike give to Vince Martonis for his museum and for all he's doing, a copy of Mike Bellani's book. Come on up here, Vince. Oh, wow. That's very nice. Here, let's take a picture here. Yeah, send me, send me multiple copies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how about a round of applause for really yeah. the first yeah. right? Let me put the camera back on. <laughs> okay. Come on, I didn't. I memorized everything you sent me, so. <laughs> but really, a round of applause for uh, for Greg, who is. Uh, I've never seen anyone with the type of um, enthusiasm and dedication for a community as I've seen from him, and I've always said that they could do a great fundraiser by having a night at the movies and show maybe the top 25 of his baseball interviews. That's true. Thank you, Mike. My name is Randy Anderson. I'm the president of the Chautauqua Sports Hall of Fame, but more importantly, a uh, member of the Tepscox Board of Directors as well. Um, on the sleeve of our jerseys, there's a patch and along the bottom of the patch, it says, Howard Emke, father of the infield tarp, as in tarp skunks. Well, we brought the ultimate authority on Howard Emke tonight. I'm going to introduce Vince Martonis. He's the historian for the town of Hanover, which is where Silver Creek is, and that's where Howard Emke was from. So, Anything you want to know about the father of the infield tarp, here's your chance. Vince Martonis. <laughs> okay, I'm not silhouetted, am I? <laughs> All right, well, as you said, I'm Vince Martonis. I've been historian 
for the town of Hanover since 1983. I love it. Uh, I want to keep going as long as I can. I try to do as many talks and displays as I can because I love getting the materials, historic materials, out to the community, especially to the kids. If you want to see a, a display I do uh, like every day, every year at the Bustai Apple Festival, it was canceled last year, but I put up a huge display, a lot of stuff for the kids, like dinosaur stuff and you know things like that that they would like. And uh, baseball is absolutely key, you know, to getting to the kids, obviously. So I'm, I'm so happy to be here and so happy to talk to you a little bit about Howard Emke. Um, I love the fact that uh, uh, Randy put together that two-page uh, sheet for you on uh, on Howard Emke, and uh, uh, Howard would be Randy would be very pleased with this. Not only because he did an excellent job with the information, but in the photo on the back with Connie Mack and Howard, Ty Cobb is cut out of the picture. <laughs> Ty Cobb, <laughs> Ty, Ty Cobb is, is, to the, is to the other side of Connie Mack in this photograph. Howard would love that. <laughs> and I'll tell you why, because that's the first, well, after Buffalo, the Federal League, I should actually go back to the beginning. Uh, Howard Emke played baseball for Silver Creek High School. He played basketball. He was a star. We have a uh, we had a team at that time called the Silver Creek Horseshoes. He played for that for a number of years, and then he uh, he had a relative in California. He ended up in the Pacific Coast League in 1913, and uh, he pitched out there. And I actually have uh, one of his baseball cards uh, from the Pacific Coast League with you know him standing there, and. Um, a pretty pretty rare card to find. Uh, empty cards are tough to, uh, some of them are, are very common, some others are quite hard to get a hold of. Uh, I think I have about uh, 26 different baseball cards now for Howard Emke. And uh, uh, some of them I say, as I said, are pretty tough to get a hold of. So he was with uh, the Pacific Coast League and then he ended up uh, briefly with, uh, uh, owned by the Washington Senators, but there was no playing for some reason. And then he, then he was uh, sold to the uh, Buffalo team, the Federal League, which operated for about two years. And I imagine you've got it, uh, I forgot where he went to. It's in the book. It's in the book. Yeah, the Federal League. The Mike Bellani book, is that right? Yes, the Mike Bellani <laughs> book. Available? <laughs> available at your better selling bookstore. <laughs> and, and on Amazon, maybe. Uh, anyhow, uh, he played there uh, for a while, but uh, that that closed, and he then got uh, was uh, with Syracuse in, in the New York State League, and he had a 30, 31 and four, a uh, thirty-one and seven record there, which was pretty got, doggone good. And I guess that's what uh, attracted Detroit to him uh, because he was signed with the Detroit Tigers, and uh, uh, Ty Cobb, you know, was man coach, uh, player coach there. So uh, he and Ty and Cobb never got along. Um, after Cobb traded him to Boston, and he traded him to Boston because Boston was the last place team, and he didn't like Howard because Howard wouldn't do what he said. Like, like Ty Cobb wanted him to hit batters, and he wouldn't do it. When he traded him to Boston, Ty Cobb came up to bat once and he hit him. <laughs> He hit him. <laughs> when Howard left the field later on, walking through the uh, the tunnel, a uh, cop attacked him. This fight. Wow. Yeah, that was Cobb. That was Cobb. Now Emke wouldn't back down. I don't know what the result of the fight was really, but I just love the fact that Howard hit him. <laughs> I think that was great. So he played for Boston, and as Randy says in his write-up. He had two excellent years. I mean, Boston was the last place team. He won 20 games for them, including a no-hitter against the Philadelphia A's. And then the second game, four days later, he pitched a one-hitter against the Yankees. And it would have been a no-hitter. There was a disputed call that, that the, the umpire called a hit. And after people looked at it later on, they, it, the experts say, no, no, it was definitely an error, definitely an error. So he should have had two no-hitters in a row. But he, he has the uh, record in the American League for one hit in two games. I, I think that still stands as a record. Uh, so then uh, he stayed with Boston for a few, a few years, went to the Philadelphia A's, and he became uh, not just a player on the A's, but a close <clears throat> friend with Connie Mack. They used to have breakfast together all the time. And he was toward the end of his career in 1929 when the series came up. And it's, it's told, the story is told different ways, but if you read Connie Mack's books, 
Howdy Max says that this was the greatest thrill of his baseball life, his baseball career. That Howard Emke was uh, hidden from everybody as the starting pitcher in the 1929 World Series against the the amazing Chicago Cubs. And he pitched uh, the game. Uh, when he walked out on the field, everyone was just aghast. The reporters, everybody, nobody knew Howard was going to start. And he pitched the game. He had 13 strikeouts, which stood a record until uh, uh, Carl Erskine broke, broke it. Uh, Dodger player, 1953, I think it was, or 54. Maybe it was 53. Anyways, uh, it was a World Series record for a long time. October 8th, Mac came to Chicago to take on the Cubs in the World Series. The first game of the series was played before President Herbert Hoover. There was one big question as Mac and Chicago manager Joe McCarthy shook hands. Who would be Connie's starting pitcher? He chose Howard Emke, a has-been. The fans were amazed, but Emke struck out 13 Chicago hitters. A new World Series record. At that point, Howard became a little bit famous, well, more than a little bit famous. You know, in 1929, uh, I've got copies of uh, 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 Western Union telegrams sent to him by various players. Uh, incidentally, I have an album about that thick, full of Howard Emke stuff at the Hanover History Center, which is the town museum I take care of, plus a file, a backup supplemental file. Uh, I put together a, a lot of Howard Emke stuff. We had a big celebration in 2001. Another huge one in 2004, uh, where I put up two of uh, one of those those blue and yellow New York State markers, those big ones. There's one in front of the Howard Emke House as you drive into Silver Creek, right next to Emke El Well Drilling. And I, I'm repainting it now. It's not done. It's only got a few letters repainted. <laughs> Any, anyways, uh, I got to get the, the town to get it off the pole, and I'm going to finish it up in my garage. Uh, and then I put one up at the kids' baseball park where they play because I thought it was important for them to see it. So right where they play in, in downtown Silver Creek Park, we put another marker up there. And the Emke family came to the 2004 celebration. They paid for the marker in front of the Howard Emke home. And then I raised money through talks and other things uh, for the other marker. And then selling things for the town. All right. Uh, so that was very good. 2004 was a very good year. At the same time, I put together a calendar, which uh, Randy has a copy of. I gave him a copy for the uh, Sports Hall of Fame big calendar with everything empty I could load into it. Not just every month, but I added pages at the end with pictures of the markers and his baseball cards and everything else. I want to show you two of the things that were in the calendar. Am I close to my 10 minutes? Uh, are you timing me? I got it. Here is uh, a 19, 1930. <laughs> What's that, Russ? You got nine minutes left. I got nine minutes left. All right. Russ, Russ is the boss. <laughs> a 1930 glove stamped Howard J. Emke. Because wow. wow. once he, you know, made that record in the World Series, D and M, uh, Draper and Maynard, a big sports uh, uh, sales catalog, uh, all kinds of sporting goods, baseballs, bats, everything. They put out a glove with his name on it. Uh, I got this off of eBay. It's not town property because I had to pay for it. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm a, this, this was not a few dollars. So we, I got this and I, I keep it on. I had it on display at the town for several years in a lock cabinet. I, I've taken it home recently because uh, I'm changing things a little bit. Uh, if you want to come up and look at it, you're welcome to do that. You can see his name on the heel of the glove. And then the other thing I got, which you might want to take, uh, come up and take a look at. I see it move just a little bit. I'm going to adjust this so you can see the names. This is a team signed ball for the 1929 Philadelphia A's. So on the top you will see Howard J. Emke and Connie Mack. And on the side you will see names like Lefty Grove and Earnshaw and so many, all the others on the famous 1929 uh, Philadelphia A's. Uh, this was not a donation. <laughs> this was another a uh, very tough bid on eBay, which I won. Uh, I don't even remember what I paid for it, but you know, again, it wasn't just uh, a few dollars. So if you want to come up and look at that, you're welcome to come up and look at that. Those are the only two things I brought. Um, 
you know, the last thing I want to do, if I can, real quickly, is turn around. Just turn around, Vince. Oh yeah, yeah. Show them what you when got, Car Scouts man. came out, man, was I excited. You know, with Howard and his company, you know, the the uh, MK Manufacturing Company making the infield tarp, presenting the idea to Connie Mack. He did. Howard did. And Connie Mack liked it. They started making the tarp. So he is the father of the infield tarp, tarp for modern baseball. So I, I got one of these jerseys, and then I, I did this. Yeah. <laughs> Town property. I should have got a one size larger. <laughs> it's just a little bit snug, but it, it'll be washed and go back hanging in the town museum, which we have. Um, and those two will go back home. Uh, just little tidbits like his 1929 salary being nine thousand hmm. dollars, and he was in a he was a saxophone player, so he played with other Philadelphia A's. They had a band, and he established a MK golf <laughs> tournament in Philadelphia that ran for many, many years, even after he died in 1959, he had a bad reaction to a penicillin shot. Wow. And that's what took him in 1959. Uh, March uh, 17th, St. Patrick's Day, uh, he died. And uh, I don't know how much longer he would have lived, but he lived a, lived, lived a very good life. And I mean that not in, in just a uh, productive sense as far as what he did, but also in a quality sense. He was a very good man. I mean, he was, he was uh, talked about as a teetotaler, someone who wouldn't smoke, wouldn't drink, wouldn't cuss, would never get in a fist fight with anybody but Ty Cobb. <laughs> I, and that's what he did. Anyways, uh, I, I think I'll stop here and uh, that's, that's a good 10 minutes. Got two more minutes. I got two more minutes. <laughs> what was this, I'll answer any questions you might have. What was his connection after he retired to Silver Creek? Did he get back much? Quite a bit. Yeah. Quite a bit. They had a, a big testimonial dinner to him. They engraved a watch. They gave him a watch beautiful gold watch and on the back it was all engraved to him Howard M. Key 1929 World Series all that and it ended up uh, in, with a man named uh, Littlefield in New England I borrowed the watch for him and I had it in 2004 he, he didn't want to get rid of it or, or donate it so I borrowed it from him I had it on display at our big celebration in 2004 I sent it back to him he gave it to his son I've lost them I can't find them I, I've tried every phone number I've tried his business contacts I cannot find him uh, anywhere uh, so I, I'm still gonna look because he said down the road we will probably donate the watch you know to the town it would be nice if it came back to the people of Silver Creek you know they, who gave it to him you know uh, in 1929 but uh, he came back a lot and uh, there are pictures of him with the uh, Silver Creek horseshoes you know pitching with them just playing around you know pitching uh, sitting with the kids uh, posing for pictures uh, quite a bit he came back, yes, even though he lived uh, in Philadelphia. I think the A's at that period were doing spring training in Fort Myers, and there are some really great photographs of Connie Mack, the team, and Thomas Edison together, which wow. is a, another sort of semi Chautauqua connection. And I think Empty would be in those photographs. Yeah, because yeah. Thomas Edison was around here, the Edison Cottage is at Chautauqua Institution. Yeah, yeah he, he, he was around here a bit. I don't know how much Howard, I don't remember anything with him and uh, and uh, Thomas Edison. Although Howard uh, was supposedly uh, pretty good friends with Babe Ruth. Uh, I've been trying to document, and I even talked to Randy about this, and that he, somebody told, I found once that he was a pallbearer at Ruth, Ruth's funeral. But honorary. 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 I, I, there were actual pallbearers and a bunch of honorary ones, and I think that's what it was. He was one of the honoraries, but he was a good friend with Babe Ruth. <laughs> As far as I know, yes, sir. With all the great minds in uh, in those days and later on field maintenance, how was it that he was the one that thought of the the tarp? And uh, what was what triggered his mind that you could put a tarp on? And what did they do before they had the tarps? Please, I forgot. Uh, I don't think I don't know of them doing anything before they uh, they had the tarps. Maybe our our resident uh, author over here with the buffalo. Team, do you know anything about that? I forgot your, your, your uh, Mr. Um, no. Other. Oh, over here. I'm sorry. I'm pointing the wrong one. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a great question. I always, you know, wondered the same thing when I heard the connection about the time here. Yeah, I don't think there was anything that I know of. Uh, but a postponed game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
when was that when was that car put out of production you know no i don't exactly that company be, be started uh in uh, producing in 1930 but right. may of 29 is when emke started the canvas yeah, stuff right. i mean he was still actually you know in baseball at that yeah, time yeah, yeah. so may of 1929 he started the canvas company and then it became uh, then got more involved with it after 1930 and then with the tarp idea i have uh, he made a lot of things, a lot of military stuff they made later on, you know, once World War II approached. I have things like apple bags made of canvas. I have one of those in the town collection. And uh, there's something else I have made of canvas. Uh, I think it had to do with the post office. Uh, I, I look for things that say MP Manufacturing Company, the old stuff, the 30s and 40s, if I can find it. So well, you'd be interested to know that when we took over the team here and we needed to buy a new tarp for the stadium, we called the MT Manufacturing Company to inquire about getting a Howard MT tarp here. Yeah. They no longer make tarps. <laughs> I think they're made in China now. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> but we did try. Kind of we yeah, we tried. Good. Yeah, you did. That was that's that was cool. kind of sad. Yep. Yep. We, we, that, that would have been wonderful if it said empty on the tarp. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can still put it on yeah. there. But <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Well, thank you, Vince. Appreciate it. You're very welcome.